So we left off on part two of our Fireball series tutorial, and we've created this really awesome Fireball projectile. Uh, in my eyes, it's pretty much done. We could tweak it for years and never be completely satisfied. Um, but overall, I think that it's a very good starting point for anyone wanting to learn how to make nice projectiles. And the last thing that we can really notice here is that the way that this projectile is going is it's very straight. And what we want it to do is we want it to come through and we want it to arc randomly in various directions to reach its target so that it's not so straight. And of course, if the target's moving, then great, you know, it's gonna arc around, but maybe your target will be standing still. Maybe this is for a demo reel and you wanna throw in a little bit of pizzazz or whatever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we've got our default projectile right here. It's very simple. And we're gonna go ahead and add in a timeline, okay? And this timeline is gonna let us play values over a certain period of time. We don't need to rename it anything. We'll just double click it to open it. We're gonna make sure that this is a vector track. And we're gonna hide all uh, axes except for uh, the blue, so Z. We're gonna make our length one. And so I'm gonna shift click there, shift click there, and shift click here. And so at 0.5 in my timeline, I'm gonna change this to 3.5. Oh, let's see, 0.5. 3.5 and then here we'll just make this sure that this is zero and then here we'll make sure that this is one now we're going to do the same for green we're going to change this right here to 0.5 and um, 3.5 and then over here we're going to change this right here to 0.5 and 3.5 and um, We'll just make sure to zero these out to their respective times that they should be. So let's say zero and one. And so now we have our curve. And from here, what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna go to our event graph. And we're gonna create three new variables. And these variables are gonna be floats. And each float is essentially going to uh, help us assign a random addition to this um, timeline or add in a random direction. And so we'll say uh, X and then we'll duplicate it and we'll call this Y and we'll duplicate it again and we'll call this Z. And then what we want to do is we want to set X, we want to set Y, and we want to set Z. And then we want to bring in X by holding control and dragging, and bring in Y and bring in Z. Then what we want to do is we want to do vector plus a vector. And we want to right click this and split struct pin so that we have X and Y and Z. So now we've got X, we've got Y, and we've got Z. And actually I did addition, this actually needs to be vector times a vector. And now we need to split the struct pin and X, Y, and Z respectively, like so. And so we've got that. And now what we wanna do is we want to uh, add local, actually add world offset for default scene root, like so. And then whenever the timeline updates, we wanna add that offset. And then from begin play, we want to drag this right here into play. And that right there will be that for now. And so um, from here, actually, uh, we need to add in a random float within range. And we wanna add in uh, four of these, or sorry, three of these. So we wanna do negative 0.1 and then one as our max on each. So we'll do Y and then we're gonna copy and paste it so that we get a random value for each one. And then for Z, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna do negative 0.1. So that way it doesn't go under the ground. Uh, it'll only go a little bit as a small arc downwards, uh, just in case. And so and then a maximum of one so it can have a larger arc. So from here, we just want to set each variable like so. And we wanna to go to play and we don't have to make it pretty. 
Uh, so there we go. That there is good enough for me. And now if we compile and we go over here and we press play, we should have motion that has the fireballs randomly arcing. As we can see that indeed the fireballs do randomly arc. And all you have to do is just adjust that maximum multiplier. So if we went over here to our fireball projectile and we stopped this and we said two and two for uh, Y and X, we'll see that our fireballs will have a much larger possible arc diameter. So we can see over here, we've got some pretty large arcs. Uh, that's not very large. Uh, it only does it occasionally since it's completely random, but you will have the chance to have a much larger arc if you do it that way. Of course, if we move this over here, uh, we can see that it still acts appropriately. Uh, sometimes the fireball might slow down a little bit, but for the most part, uh, it is trying its best to reach this target even with offsets. So of course, your offsets are gonna look better the farther away your target is. And so uh, from there, I think that that is pretty much this tutorial. Uh, now you can tweak all of the um, results to your heart's desire, make it curve as much as you want, and uh, hopefully you learned a lot. Go ahead and leave a like and, a, and subscribe to me if you haven't. Comment, um, reach out to me if you need to, nick at jengafx.com. I will surely um, answer you if you have any questions. And so uh, I hope you enjoyed this series. We will be doing cast effects and impact effects for this uh, particular effect. And um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks.